Hello students, I hope all is well. I'm here with a tutorial for Udacity's front end nano degree for their feed reader testing project. Now I have here the rubric. What I'm going to do is just go over each of the sections and each of the specs within the sections and help you guys get your project ready and prepare for submission. So I have my copy on the desktop. I'm going to show you how I did mine. I'm going to compare my project to the rubric to give you guys an understanding of how to do certain things. So, here's the project I have loaded in the browser. If you look at the bottom, you can see that there are seven specs, there are three, there are four suites and specs within each suite. Now inside of the code I have the um, project loaded here. The index page is just where everything is um, being loaded. You don't have to touch this. This comes from Udacity. You're mainly going to focus inside of Jasmine, Spec, and a Feed Reader JS. Now I'm going to load up AppJS on the left just to reference a few things. <clears throat> now, inside Feed Reader, Udacity provides a lot of comments that will guide you through making or completing a project. So for each of those comments, you'll see a to-do, and they will tell you what it is that you have to do. They start off the first one for you, which is RSS feed. I already have it done, but I'm just going to walk through each of the specs for you, explain what's going on and how you guys can implement something similar to how I did. Now for the first suite, which is RSS feeds, this is a suite pretty much described, which is what we see right here. And for every time we call it inside of describe, that's the spec. Now, what do we expect from RSS feeds? We expect that all feeds are defined which is coming from app.js. This is already provided by Udacity. You don't have to do anything here. We expect all feeds to be defined and we expect feeds.length not to be zero, right? Now, this is just a basic check. Um, you know, JavaScript is loosely typed. You can change length to be anything else. For example, if I come to the console and I say, var list is equal to an array. If I do list.length, you'll see zero. But if I try to reassign length to some other value, let's say a evaluate length at. Okay, maybe I underestimated JavaScript. So that's I guess this is a good test. So another way of doing it, what I was thinking is you can do something like to be greater than. If I refresh it, it still passes, it works fine. So there are many ways of writing your tests, but you want to write them in a way that you're checking exactly what it is you expect. So we know that we want to have more than one. We want to make sure that it's a number. So you can write certain tests like greater than or things of like that nature. So this is good. The next one is pretty much checking each feed and making sure that its URL is defined and not blank. So in order to do that, you would loop through them. I'm using for let feed of all feeds. Now for each feed, I expect URL to be defined. I want the constructor to be a string because arrays also have length. So just because it has length doesn't mean it's always going to be a string. So I added this third expect call to make sure that it's of type string. Now again, there's many ways of doing it. You can say type of, 
URL to be string. Same thing, but this is just the way I did it. And basically doing the same thing for the name of each feed. Just looping through that, make sure name is defined, the constructor is a string, and the length is not zero. So you can't really have negative. So again, this is similar to uh, greater than, just another way of doing it. Now, the next suite, which is the menu, this suite will test if the menu works when you click the icon. So there are two um, specs inside of it. The first spec is checking if the menu is hidden by default, right? Now, if you come into the elements tab in the dev tools, if we were to click, we can see that something's changing here in the DOM. If we click it again, So it looks like whenever a body has this menu-hidden class, that's when the sidebar is hidden. Whenever it doesn't have it, then the sidebar is showing. So this is pretty much where we want to pay attention to inside this spec. So if we reload the page, by default, body has that class, right? Now. You can use jQuery to check, like how it says in the rubric, they expect you to use um, jQuery has class. You can do the same thing without jQuery. Let me show you. If you come to the console, what I'm going to do is call document dot body. Now for the body tag. I'm going to call dot class list, right? And I can see there's menu hidden. There's only one, right? Now, on that property class list, I can call dot contain, which is a function, and I just pass in a string of what I want to check for. So if I say um, menu dash hidden is true because body does have that um, class in its class list. If I go to JS HTML class list contains, I'm going to come to, let's try both of these. You can see the element dot class list is a read only property which returns a live DOM token list collection of the class attributes of the element, right? So we can add, we can remove classes, we can toggle and contains. Now checks if specific class value exists in the class attribute of elements. So this is basically the equivalent of jQuery's um, has class. So that's what I'm doing here. So I'm just storing the um, boolean of this function call. I'm checking if body has this class. And I expect it to be true. It's hidden by default. Now the next test is pretty much checking if the menu button works, right? Now, we know that by default when the page loads the menu is hidden right so in order to toggle that programmatically we can select this element in JavaScript so document I create selector a tag with the class main icon link and we can call dot click to trigger to click on it and once we do that I'm going to expect that body having the menu class is false right because it's no longer hidden 
I'm going to click that menu button one more time and then same thing as above but instead of being hidden I expect it to be true instead of false and that's basically it for that second spec under the menu suite now for initial entries this one requires asynchronous um, activity so with uh, Jasmine JS, they allow you to write asynchronous tests by using a callback, telling Jasmine when it's done. So let's see if I can find it. I don't see here the documentation is. This isn't what I was looking for. Docs and induction. Right, so this is the right page. If I come and search for, I think it's asynchronous support right here. So in Jasmine, we can call before each. And we pass in a function that takes in a done callback. And basically, we can run something before each spec gets tested, right? So, for example, on their introduction, they have a set timeout, which will complete in one what, millisecond. So, it's going to set value to zero, and it's going to call done. Now... When done gets called, that's when it's going to run each spec, basically. So this is what allows us to test things asynchronously, like making an AJAX call and testing some responses. So for those who want to learn more about it, you can come to jasmine.github.il slash 2.0 slash introduction.html and they have their full documentation here. Now coming back to my code, inside app.js they have a function called load feed. It takes in an ID which is basically an index of a particular object inside this array and then it accepts a callback which will run whenever it finishes its AJAX call. Now once we make a call load feed, I'm just going to load like the one index or call done once it finishes loading feed. Now when it's done, that's when this spec is going to run. Now in this spec, what I'm going to do is get a reference to the div with the class feed. Now I expect that v container that children that length come back inside the page we inspect and we can see this div right if you look inside it has all of these articles with a class entry now the way I did it was v container that children that length to be greater than zero. Now, when you submit it, they may complain that you're not checking the actual feed. So, in the event that happens, so let's say entries, we will say B container that query selector all, right? We want multiple results. Now, let's say we want article with the class entry. So all article tags with the class entry. And then we can just say entries dot length. So either way, I think this is the better way of doing it. So we have this spec done. We come down to last week this is new feed selection. So basically, they want to test that loading different feeds work. 
and the way I did it was I created two variables. They're both um, declared but just undefined. They have no value. I'm going to do the same thing as above as far as using asynchronous support, calling Jasmine's before each function. I'm going to load one feed, and in the callback, I'm just going to get a copy of that inner HTML. And then I'm going to load a second feed at the second index. And then in that callback, I'm going to store the HTML of that feed inside the second variable. Now, once I have two different um, feed HTMLs, that's what I call done. And then this spec will run. Now, when this spec runs, I expect the first feed not to be second feed. Pretty much they're two different feeds. Basically, just a string comparison of the HTML. Now, if I reload the page, you can see that it's it did this thing. It's doing asynchronous support and all specs pass, no failures. Now, once you have everything working, all the specs pass, be sure to clean up your code, remove all of the to-do comments that Udacity provides. You can remove it entirely, or you can replace it with your own comments, describing the suite, describing the specs. After that, you wanna make sure your code quality is good, you're following syntax standards, Everything's indented property, properly within scopes. If you're using a text editor like Atom, you can simply uh, install a package or a plugin to like um, lint or beautify your code. Make sure everything is in order, and then it's ready for submission. So, hopefully that helps. If you have any questions, just add a comment in the comment section below. Hope this video helped, and I was. See you guys later. Thanks for watching.